Day zero is the moment before company formation. When a founder decides to take the plunge, follow their dream, and commit to pursuing their vision of change. On day zero, you'll hear founders tell their story. Hi, this is Aaron Martin. I've got the privilege of uh, being able to interview Nathan Bays. So, uh, hi, Nathan. Uh, great to see you. Aaron, great to see you as well. So, tell me how kind of the origin story, like how did you kind of get involved in healthcare? What were your kind of first inkling into it and how did you get started? Wow. Great, great question. And I'll definitely have to give you the cliff notes version. I had no intentions of going into healthcare. Um, my mom was a nurse, um, growing up and, you know, during my childhood transitioned to cardiac rehab, but I had no, you know, intention of, of being in healthcare. Um, but I graduated, I'd spent time in, in politics and policy, went to law school, graduated in 2007 with the intent to do, you know, really corporate, um, transactional M and a type of work. Um, uh, most of that work dried up very quickly after I graduated law school in, uh, in the fall of, uh, or I guess in the spring of 2007, started work in the fall of 2007. And I found myself doing, um, healthcare work. So I was doing a lot of physician, uh, transactions, um, some hospital and, and larger facility deals, a lot of physician ambulatory work and really started diving in deeper, you know, on the healthcare space, uh, was fortunate to have a good, a good network in healthcare. Um, during that period of time, I was introduced to Gary Bisbee, who's the, the founder of Think Medium and, and of this show and, uh, and got to know Gary. I've always been interested in kind of the entrepreneurial side, come from a business family. My grandfather and dad were, were entrepreneurs, started a business and, you know, always thought that, um, you know, while I enjoyed practicing law, you know, kind of being in something that was more, you know, on the business side was interesting. And, um, and so, you know, as Gary, you know, um, he had started the health management Academy with a partner in the late nineties, he was returning to more of a, an active role within the health management Academy. He had been CEO of, of a couple of companies between the late nineties and 2010. And with some of the initiatives that he was looking, you know, to grow the business, uh, you know, we had conversations and he, for better, you know, for better or worse, definitely better, but <laughs> there were days where it was, you know, we were pulling our hair out, uh, or what's left of it, but, uh, but it was, it was a good run. He recruited me in and we, you know, I spent time with him and really that time at, at the Academy, you know, kind of six years from January, 2011 to, to early 2017, was really when I learned healthcare. I had a baseline knowledge from working on, you know, transactions, uh, you know, as an attorney, but but that was really where I learned healthcare and really the full continuum of of kind of the healthcare services space. Every everything except life sciences. Um, you know, I I led you know the policy and strategic advisory work at the academy. I worked closely with Gary on a lot of the major initiatives and, and his partner. I was general counsel of the organization, so I wore multiple multiple hats. Um, during my time there. And also that's when I became, you know, more interested at the individual level, uh, in early stage companies and started investing, um, you know, as an individual in, in kind of early stage healthcare IT and service delivery companies during that time as well. So it was really that window, you know, from kind of late twenties to early thirties at the Academy where I, I really became immersed in healthcare and decided it's where I wanted to spend, you know, my time, you know, throughout the rest of my career. That must've been incredible to set into um, cause you know, I've, I've been to many HMA, you know, sessions and, uh, the convening and just, you know, having these experts and kind of peers, you know, from across the different industry, it must've been just really, really cool just to be able to kind of sit in and just absorb, you know, all the thought leadership that was going on in, in, in that context. Fascinating. Um, you know, it was fascinating to do it. And it was also, you know, I, I did a lot of speaking as well. So boards, leadership teams, a lot of the external facing work of the academy at the forum meetings. So it was really a unique learning experience yeah. to be in the room, as you said, with all these executives, but then the opportunity to go out and actually spend time in dialogue with them around things that may have been occurring from a policy perspective, strategic, you know, market landscape, all of that was just, you know, and during that window, I mean, healthcare is always interesting. And I think it becomes in some ways more interesting with each, each month and each year. But that was a particularly unique period of time post, you know, the Affordable Care Act passage where there was just so much going on from a policy and care delivery. And, you know, there was a lot of, of, um, you know, optimism about changing care models, you know, I think in some ways more than there is today, but there was just a lot of energy around, you know, doing things different, being different, 
digital transformation, which you know you're very familiar with. I mean, there was just so much energy. A lot of that was really new at that period of time, and it was just a, a fun time to be there and a great learning time. So much of the the innovation is sparked from these kind of policy changes, either directly, indirectly, intentionally, unintentionally. But that must have been fascinating to kind of watch, like how something happening in Washington could kind of beget, if you will, a, a ton of these different innovations. Totally. It kind of beget these innovations on the delivery system side with large health systems, like, you know, like, you know, Providence where, where you're at. But also, if you think about, you know, entire companies were formed and created to, to basically, you know, provide either, you know, the capabilities that existing, you know, healthcare ecosystem players would need or to do it on their own to really kind of, you know, shift the system forward away from fee for service into value managing risk. I mean, a, a whole, you know, kind of, you know, generation of new companies were really spawned uh, during that during that time period, which was just fascinating. And, and many of them are, you know, are very successful and scaled companies, you know, today. So it's been really interesting to watch that that growth. What's the 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 thing that you hope to get out of these interviews that, that are upcoming with these these founders? What would you like to just make sure that we kind of kind of pull out of those conversations and get out into the world, if you will? I think Aaron, and you've done a lot of investing and you've spent a lot of time, you know, doing de novo companies and, and early working, you know, with early stage companies. You know, one of the things that I think is is, you know, most um fascinating about, you know, founding a company or the founding story is really just thinking about, you know, I see problems every day, right? In my, you know, you know, I can I can't walk, you know, from one floor of my house to another without saying, you know, this should work better or this should be fixed. But kind of that that moment to say, you know, we we should actually start a business, organize a group of people, which, you know, in in, in many ways that's what a, a business starting a business, you're just saying, I'm gonna step out and organize a group of people and get some money. And this group of people is going to work really, really hard to fix this problem. And I love hearing about, you know, what, you know, what kind of takes an individual from saying, hey, this is not working well, this is not working right, it could be better, to saying, I'm going to devote, you know, some portion of my professional career to fixing it. Um, and just the thought process that goes through that. And I think you just hear fascinating stories from founders, from entrepreneurs about what actually drove them from observing a problem to saying, I'm going to take, you know, all of our professional careers are limited, 35 years, 40 years, for I mean, however long they may be, you know, from a duration standpoint, but to say, if, you know, kind of part of my life, I'm going to devote to fixing this problem. And I think you just hear fascinating stories with so many anecdotes that you can learn from and apply to other situations. And so I'm really interested in hearing you know, kind of that aspect of the founding journey from, uh, you know, from from founders in these interviews. Yeah, it's it's just to kind of riff on what you you just said. When we incubate new companies, you know, there's several different kind of what we call stage gates that it, it goes through. And the first one is, do you actually get signal to noise on kind of solving the problem that, that you're talking about? Um, you know, another is, can you get another customer interested beyond kind of Providence? Third one is, can you recruit a really, really high-end management team that's very experienced. And then the fourth is, can you get an external VC to kind of come in and fund it? And I think the actual biggest signal to noise is that third step. Because if somebody's willing to kind of devote five to seven years of their lives on, you know, that that challenge or that opportunity, that to me is the biggest signal to noise. And I always tell the team, like, you know, especially these days, it's a little bit easier to get uh, financing than it used to be. But getting really, really top end talent is the truest indication is that there's a there there. So anyways, yeah, well, thanks, Nathan. I'm looking forward to it and looking forward to, to your interviewing folks and uh, really, really exciting stuff. Yeah, likewise, I, I am as well. And it'll be fun to hear the interviews and to hear your interviews and hear your story uh, as well. 